I should be able to see the chat. All right. So we left off about here talking about um, data frames. Um, so a data frame is a named list of vectors, uh, column names. So in other words, each column in a data frame is a vector. Um, it has the attributes of um, the column names and row names. Uh, row names by default will just number from one to the length of the number of rows, um, but you can give them specific character value names if you want. And they have the class data frame. Uh, so remember last time we talked about attributes. So those are the, the um, what turn, um, turn them into, I guess, um, sorry, let me, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm a little bit uh, rusty from last week. So basically we, we talked about atomic vectors, which are um, uh, vectors where each element is of the same data type. So either numeric or character, et cetera. So each column in the data frame has to be an at uh, atomic vector, I believe. Um, so you cannot put a list as a column in a data frame with different element types in it. it has to be a, an atomic vector. Um, and then, so the attributes are what turn like regular plane vectors into um, atomic vectors and into, I guess, data frames. I'm a little rusty on that exactly. So I'm, hopefully I'm not giving misinformation about that. But anyway, these are the attributes of the data frame. So to construct it, um, you put it inside the data frame function. Um, by putting the a name and an equal sign, you can name the columns as you go. Um, you can also name them afterwards. If you just put in the C123 and C with the characters, um, it would still work. It would just... I think it would still work. It just um, wouldn't have, the, I guess it gives it default names. I can't remember. Um, we could actually test that if you want. So I don't give you wrong information. Let's just do this. I'm pretty sure if you did this, it would still work. Oops. All right. Yep. And then if you look at it, oof. Got it. Gives it horrible names. So I guess you really want to name it while you're constructing it. But you could also just after you construct it, do this. Um, sorry, names. I might be getting ahead of myself here, but um, and what did they call it? Column. All right. And now you'll see it. It gives it the names that you want, right? So that's two ways to name the columns, uh, either during construction or after. Um, you can see the type. If you do type of, it says list. But if you do attributes, uh, because it's basically a list of atomic vectors, right? That's what the data frame is. And then, but if you put attributes, it'll show that the class is data frame, right? Um, then the row names, like I said, by default, they just number um, the columns. Uh, so you can use the row names function to see the row names, column names function to use to see the column names. Um, you can also just use names, which is the same as column names, and and row to see the number of rows, and call to see the number of columns, and length on a data frame shows you the number of columns. Um, ah, yeah. So unlike other lists in a data frame, all of the vectors or columns need to be of the same length. You can't have different lengths. Um, um, I guess we didn't, I didn't put an example of that, but I think um, 
Because I think if you try, let's see, let's try just to see what happens, right? If we try to construct it with different lengths. I don't know if it recycles values or if it gives you an error. So let's just try it. Error, right? So you, it won't let you do it. All right, so tibbles uh, were created to relieve some of the um, pain points that data frames create uh, because the way they explained it in the book, basically some of the ideas they thought were good ideas while they were creating them turned out later didn't work as well as they thought. So, um, so tibbles are lazy and surly. That's their sort of um, uh, easy way of, uh, simple way of describing uh, the difference between them and data frames. Uh, so lazy means tibbles do not do a lot of the things that data frames do, like coercing strings, transform non-syntactic names, or recycle vectors. Okay, there you go. So uh, that explains why our little test here didn't work, right? Um, oh, actually, that doesn't explain because that was- So the test there didn't work just because it's not, one's not a multiple of the other. It'll recycle as long as there are multiple- Oh, as long as there are multiples? I yeah. forgot that. And then, yeah, and then since that's often- not that's often accidental right yeah um yeah. tibble has only will do that if it's like looks like it's more intentional where you just have a one exactly yeah. yep um so uh forcing strings so oh i guess they mean coerce them to a sorry i've like forgotten a lot in the last week. <laughs> I guess they mean coerce them to a factor, right? So it does not coerce strings. But actually, I think as of the current version of our, um, if I remember right, data frames don't do that by default anymore either, right? Um, so sorry, I'm getting a little. Um, So it's saying, uh, so the example here, we created a data frame where we said strings as factors equals true. This was the default, but it's not anymore. Um, so, uh, and then just to, and then a tibble, right? And then when you compare the, the structure of the data frame to the structure of the tibble, right? The data frame now, it, it it's factor, a factor, whereas the tibble is character. But again, I think they work the same way now. I don't know. Does anybody want to have any questions about that? Want to test that? We're good? OK. Um, so um, tibbles will not transform non-syntactic names. So then you'd have to um, put them inside uh, the back ticks, right? So the Data frame will give it an X in front to make it a syntactic name. The tibble will not, right? Uh, and there we go with the recycle vectors of length greater than one. So tibbles will, will not. They'll throw you an error like that if you try to do that. Um, and yeah, as we can see, the data frame worked here because we have, it's a mult, the length two is, is a, uh, or length four is a multiple of the length two. So it's able to recycle it in that case. Um, and then surly, surly uh, means that they complain, basically, if they and throw errors and warnings, if uh, you try to do something that they can't do. So, um, Subsetting always yields a tibble. Well, we'll talk about that in the subsetting uh, column, uh, a chapter. And then, um, like I said, they complain. So that's what Sir means. So um, let's skip past the subsetting. Uh, okay. So. So 
So data frames, even though the column name is column one or column two, if you um, don't put the full name, it will uh, it will sort of finish the name for you and try to try to guess the column, right? Um, whereas a tibble, if you try to do that, it says that's an unknown column, right? One more difference. Tibble allows you to refer to variables created during construction. Ah, right. So here you're creating a tibble and you use this x equals one through three, and then you use x in order to create y. Uh, so you can do that with a tibble, but apparently not with a data frame. Um, row names. So again, like I said, you can add row names if you don't want to just use the standard numbering. Um, you can get and set them with the row names um, function. It has to be a character vector containing only unique values. And um, then you can use those names to subset the rows. All right, so here um, we create a data frame with two columns, age and hair, and we give it row names Bob, Susan, and Sam, right? And you, so when you print it, you'll see the row names there instead of a numbering. Um, uh, again, you can see them using the same function or you can set them. Uh, so if you, uh, you know, I here I just changed the order to show, right? Instead of Bob, Susan, Sam, now it's Susan, Bob, Sam, and you can just, rename the rows using that same row names function. Um, Hadley Wickham says there's three reasons why you generally don't want to use them. Um, I can be honest, I do use them. <laughs> often so I didn't quite understand exactly why he doesn't like it but I put this in the notes anyway if you want to understand why he he doesn't really recommend them so um I guess you know the one thing about they must be unique but I guess it just depends if you have probably a ton of data it would be cumbersome but um on smaller data sets I think it's not really an issue all right so printing data frames and tibbles print differently um, the tibble basically just gives you a little more kind of metadata about it, you know, shows you the column types, um, and that it's a tibble and this, the, uh, shape of that tibble structure. Um, two undesirable subsetting behaviors. Um, yeah. So let's skip that again. We'll talk about that in the next chapter, actually. Um, testing. So to test whether something is a data frame, you can use is.dataframe, or whether it's a tibble, you use the tibble package is underscore tibble rather than dot. Um, all right, coercion getting near the end here finally. Um, so if you wanna force something to be a data frame, you can use the as.dataframe or to be a tibble, at, uh, tibble package as underscore tibble. List columns. Oh, list columns are allowed in data frames, but you have to do a little extra work by either adding the list column after creation or wrapping the list in this I function. Yeah, I definitely forgot that in the last week. So apparently you can do it. Um, so here we did it where we created the data frame first and then added a column Y, with, which is this list. Um, so there it is. And then you get the same result if you um, wrap it in this I function while you're creating the data frame. So that's the two different ways to do the same thing. Um, matrix and data frame columns. Um, 
So as long as the number of rows matches the data frame, it's also possible to have a matrix or data frame as a column of a data frame. Um, and it's done the same way that you can do it with list columns. You either have to do it after creation or using this I function, right? So there's the example there using the I function. Um, and you can see, yeah, this, this one is uh, the matrix is in column Y. And then here we added column Z after the fact. So those are the, you know, the two different ways of adding um, a matrix or a data frame as a column of another data frame. And so you can see Y and Z. When you select those columns, you can see the column is actually another uh, matrix or data frame. All right, we're really close now. Null, special type of object. Length zero cannot have attributes. Um, uh, I think technically it's not really a vector, but um, they include it in this chapter anyway. Um, so again, type is null, length is zero. Um, and not allowed to have attributes. And you can test it using is.null. And that's it. That's so finally be okay. That's it for vectors. So move on to subsetting. Um, any questions actually before we move on from that chapter? Anybody want to see anything? Test anything? Nope. Okay, good. All right. So let me just knit this one again. All right, subsetting. So there are six ways to subset atomic vectors. Um, three subsetting operators, the double brackets, the single brackets, and the dollar sign. Um, we're gonna learn about how subsetting works with different types of vectors and um, how subsetting can be combined with assignments. And honestly, like I said, this last part, that's the part I didn't actually quite finish. So we'll see <laughs> when we get there. Um, I just left the notes for that as is. All right. So selecting multiple elements uh, from an atomic vector. There are six ways, it says. Um, you can use positive integer indices. Um, so uh, you use the single brackets and inside that you put um, a vector with the index numbers of the values that you want. Um, duplicate indices will ret return duplicate values. So you can basically uh, return the same value twice by just putting the same index twice. Um, Real numbers will truncate. So if you put in an index that is a uh, decimal, it'll just truncate the decimal. So this is the equivalent of selecting three and three, right? Um, you can also use negative integer indices and negative signs will basically, um, drop those values. So you'll get everything except what you put as a negative in index. So here, uh, because our our um, vector is length four, we will get, it will return two and four. So in this case, this um, So sorry, I want to point out two things. So here you can put the negative in outside the vector or inside the vector like this, right? And these two are the equivalent in this case of saying two and four because our, our vector is of length four 
all three of those would return this. Um, you cannot put negative and positive in indices within the same vector though. It throws an error. Okay, you can use logical vectors. So you can use true and false. Um, so here we have true, true, false, true. So only the third value will get dropped. So we get one, two, and four. Um, you can use a, uh, like a condition to create the logical vector. So, you know, where X is less than three. Um, and you can put that condition directly into the brackets like this, or you can create the condition outside, the logical vector outside of uh, the brackets, save it as a, as a vector itself and use that vector inside the brackets. Let me know if you want me to actually run any of this, if anybody's got any questions. Um, recycling rules. So in this case, I think this is why I was confused before. In this case, uh, the recycling applies when two vectors are of different lengths. The shorter of the two is recycled to the length of the longer. Um, he recommends easy to understand if uh, X or Y is length one, but best to avoid other lengths, right? Um, but it, it, so it might be confusing, but it does work, right? So in this case, um, X is length four. So if you put in a vector that's length two, then it will recycle that vector. So in this case, it'll be like, you'll get, it'll skip the first element, you'll get the second element, then you'll skip the third element and you get the fourth element because fourth element because it's recycling, right? So you get two and four, right? Equivalent to, uh, oh, I have these backwards. It should be false, true, false, true. Sorry about that. I'll fix that. Actually, let's do that right here. I don't wanna forget to fix that. Okay. Um, if you have missing values or NAs in your index, it'll return NA in those positions, right? So here we got NA true, and again, it's recycling. So you get NA, then two, then NA, then four. Um, if you put nothing inside the brackets, it just returns the entire, uh, vector, it's the same as just putting X without brackets. If you put a zero, uh, it returns a zero length vector. So, and then character vectors. Um, so, so in this case, uh, if you create a named vector, Right, so we have A, B, C, D are the names for vector Y. Um, then you can use those names to select the elements you want. So, you can, and you can put them same as before, you can put them out of order, it doesn't have to be in order. DBA will give you DBA. Um, and you can repeat them just like with integers. So you can put AAA and get the same value three times. Um, Sorry, I don't need that. Okay, and so here, um, the names have to be matched exactly, right? So here we created another vector Z. Let's see, let's run this one. Right. So Z is named A, B, C, and D, E, F for the two columns. Um, you cannot just put A and D. 
So that that will give you NAs. It will not work because the names don't match exactly. So it's not like um, we saw before with the data frames. All right, so lists. Subsetting works the same way. A single bracket always returns a list and the double bracket or the dollar sign lets you pull elements out of a list. Um, and just a note, I thought I put this note here, I guess I put it somewhere else, that an element can be another list, right? So if you have a list inside of a list, um, the element can also be another list, right? So here I created a list uh, with three vectors inside it. Um, I should say, so sorry, an element can also be another vector or a list, right? So I created a list with three vectors, named vectors, A, B, and C. Looks like this, right? So if I use single brackets and just put a two inside of it, I get the named vector back, right? If I don't want, if I just want um, the vector without its attributes, I can use the double brackets, right? So here, here we get a named, actually named list. I think I checked that, let me see. I'm going to show you this. I did this this way on purpose. So give me a second. I'm going to run all of this. All right. So, oh, sorry, I'm trying to get to the environment. So if you look, L1 is actually, sorry, it's returning a list, right? List of one. Um, when you use the single bracket. When you do the double brackets, you'll see L2 down here is a character vector, right? So just to look at that again. So L1 single brackets returns a named list. L, uh, L2, which is the double brackets, returns a character vector. Um, and then the dollar sign notation and selecting, uh, you know, uh, by name, the, sorry, the uh, element name gives you the same uh, as the double brackets, gives you a character vector, right? So, sorry, oops, if you look at, L3, uh, sorry, L2B, it's the same as L2, right? It's double brackets or, or dollar sign notation. Um, then if you want to return a specific element uh, within one of those elements, if that makes sense. So, so because this list is three three uh, vectors, right? If you want a specific element from one of those vectors, then you need to um, use the, the double brackets to select uh, the first element, and then the second set of brackets to select the element within that, right? So in this case, let's look at this. Sorry, I want to look at um, my list. All right, so this is this is the original list, right? And when you select uh, this way, using double brackets with two and single brackets with three, you're getting the third element in this in the second sublist, right? So here's your second sublist and the third element within that, which is G, right? You can do the same thing using the name B instead of the vector, uh, instead of the uh, ind index in here. Um, 
or you can do the same thing using the dollar sign notation. All of those will then give you a single element from that. So this came out of that Stack Overflow article that I posted in the chat, which I thought this made it a lot clearer for me to try to understand how this works, right? So if you have, if you just select X, you're getting the list with all the sublists inside of it, right? Each packet of pepper represents a sublist. If you do X with the single brackets and select one, oops, sorry, shouldn't drag on that, one uh, element from within X using single brackets, you get one single packet, one list within the within the list, right? Then if you use the double brackets, right? You're just getting that one sub list without the uh, containing list. And then if you do this double brackets to contain the sub list and then, oh, actually, oh, I just noticed this picture is a little messed up because he has double brackets on this side and single on that side. You can just use single brackets here. Um, that's how you get the pepper inside the packet. So the single element within the sublist of a of a larger containing list. I see some like some faces look like oh <laughs> I see smiles. So I I hope other people find this uh, helpful. This picture, yes, good, good. Um, any questions or comments at this point? And then I linked that Stack Overflow article in case uh, people want to look at that and read some of the more detailed comments in there. Okay. So matrices and arrays. Let's make this bigger again. Um, so you can subset higher dimensional structures in three ways with multiple vectors, with a single vector or, or with a matrix. So let's create a matrix A, um, a three rows and four columns. Uh, and we named the columns A, B, C, D, right? So we can use a single index followed by a comma to select a single row, the first row in this case, right? So we get the four columns, first row. We can select a single column by putting the comma and then the index, right? So the, the number before the comma selects the rows, the number after the comma selects the columns. So in this case, now we get the uh, first column, all rows within. Uh, within that column. Interesting difference though, I didn't even notice this before though. Note that um, here it returns a another data frame because it has four columns. Here it returns a vector because you're only selecting one column. Um, then if you want a single element within that, you use both index numbers, right? So first row first column is one, right? Uh, you can also then use ranges on either side of the comma. So you can get the first two rows of the third and fourth columns. That gives you that. Um, you can use logicals in there or named vectors. So here we get the uh, first and third elements of columns B and A. And you can still use zero indexing and negative indexing. Um, zero indexing in this case gives you the names of the um, matrix. And the negative index tells you uh, that you do not want the second column. So B is dropped, right? Oh, I sorry. I'm just noticing the comments that the uh, the last bracket got cut off on that <laughs> picture. Yeah, I was trying to. That's what my face. I mean, I really appreciate this tweet, but I was trying to think about. Yeah, 
whether or not I had an opinion on whether it should be a single bracket or yeah because I'm wondering that too now that you said that this that it was cut off I don't we could test it if we want to see if it makes any difference but I think you would get the same results I think yeah I think it's partially depends on the structure I think the structure of the data frame that I created I don't think it would make a difference but let's say you have further nesting going on then it probably would make a difference you know what I mean like if that I think so um, too. yeah but I'm not sure what I think where you know his analogy with the I'm not sure for his analogy what the distinction would be between the two. I think I can, if I, yeah, I think it makes sense for various applications, but my brain struggles at the level of the analogy. Yeah. Um, did you want to, I mean. No, I, wanna... no, sorry. I just. Okay. No, that's okay. I was no, like, how do you really posted... make a typo? And I had to answer that question. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, so, I mean, it's making me curious now. So let's say, where was that? So yeah, so let's run everything up to there. Right, so, sorry. So if we just run that, we get that. But if we put another set of brackets here, just to see what happens, we get the exact same thing, right? So I think, like I said, because of the st structure of this particular list, it doesn't matter because there's no further nesting. But if this third element of B was another list, it would make a difference. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. yeah. So maybe I'll add that to the notes later. Um, all right. So then the last thing here is that you can also subset a matrix with another matrix. Um, so I made another one B, which is just two rows, two columns. Um, and then I can subset A using B. So it will give me, um, wow, now I have to remember, I have to wrap my head around this. So I think, <laughs> I guess it's giving me, let's look at, let's look at uh, A again. Uh, sorry, let's see what A looks like. So it's giving me the, third element of the first row. Okay, so third element of the first row and fourth element of the second row, seven and 11, right? So each, um, each row in this matrix is your index one comma three, two comma four. I see confused looks. Does anybody want like more to look at that a little closer? Uh, I'm reading all of it lost with the example. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Oh, good. Yeah. So So I don't think I can see the second row. It produces so, all right, so here, our original, I actually changed my example a little. So this one only has, the matrix has three rows, three columns, right? So the first 
index. These are the rows that it should return. So it should be returning the first and the third row in the second column and then the first column out of order. Right, which is what we get. So we get the um it's a little, it's hard to, you know what? Because he doesn't print A first, it's hard to um it's a little hard to see. Like here he just returns the first two rows, but there's a third row there that should be um three, six, nine, right? So so and then here, like I said, we get column A second but we get the first and third elements and column b first with the first and third elements does that help all right good I didn't, realize there, I didn't realize there was a third row thanks yes there's a third <laughs> row in this matrix but even print, you. Yeah. Hard to get that yeah yeah thanks all i right. didn't want to interrupt you thanks oh no problem honestly i feel like that's i think to me this is more interesting, like going through questions people had and trying to make sure everybody understands is more interesting than listening to me talk the whole time. So please interrupt me if you have questions because um, I feel like I'm just going on and on and on. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so here's like a little more complicated example um, that was from the book, I think. Um, so he creates this vowels matrix here, and then the select matrix, which is a subset of that, one, three, two, one, one, four, and he uses select to select from vowels, right? So again, we get like um, first row, first column, third row, and here, let's so we can see the original up top, third row, first column, so it's three comma one, second row, fourth column, two comma four, right? Uh, okay, so you can also subset with a single vector. Um, arrays in R stored column wise. Sorry, I'm getting a little confused. I did, so in this case, um, we're selecting three and 15. So we get three comma one, five comma three. So we're getting this value and this value, right? So 15, Basically, it counts this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This is the 15th value, right? So it goes, it counts down the columns if you put in uh, a vector that, like this. So, and I believe, I feel like to me, it's a little confusing because there's only two values in there. It makes you think that that's like row and column, but it's not. It's two values from the matrix. Um, so, right, like if you wanted to, you could put in, just put in a bunch of values and it should return for them, right? Good. <laughs> um, so data frames and tibbles. Data frames act like both lists and matrices. Um, so when subsetting with a single index, they behave like lists and index the columns. So if you just put, um, this is considered a single index, right? It's selecting two columns, the first two columns. Um, but if you put two in indices with a comma, so as long as you put a comma there, it's two indices, then it selects the first three rows and all the columns. So if you leave it blank here, because there's a comma separating, even though this is blank, it's that blank represents all columns. 
not none of the columns, right? Um, so that's a little counterintuitive. You would think blank would be like zero, but it's not. It's selecting all. And you could do it the other way around. If you put a, a space comma, or you don't even need a space. If you just put the comma and then put one through three, you would be selecting all the rows of th the first three columns. So, so here we're uh, reading in the penguins data, um, penguins two through three. Uh, selects columns two and three from the penguins data frame. So let's look at penguins real quick, just so you know what it looks like. Here's the penguins, right? It's got, was that eight columns or something? So yeah, eight columns and 344 observations or rows, right? So if you select penguins with two to three inside with no comma, right? Then you're selecting columns two and three. Uh, you can also use the names of the columns the same way with no comma inside the brackets to select the same two columns. Um, but as soon as you put a comma there, now it's selecting rows one through two in columns three through four. Sorry, I can't seem to select properly. So, um, so here you just get those four values. First two rows, third and fourth columns. You cannot um, put more than one number within the double brackets. And that actually gets explained later in the notes. But basically, double brackets, you can only have a single value in there. Um, so this will throw an error. Uh, but if you're just selecting one column here, you can put multiple values within the second bracket, right? So, um, so this selects the third column and the first four rows from that column. Or equivalently, you can use the dollar sign with the column name and then select the first four rows in brackets after that. So honest, a lot of this is uh, not in the book. This is just sort of extra stuff that we put in. Um, somebody else started with this penguins data and then I added a few more things um, to try to make it clearer, hopefully. Um, any questions at this point? Everybody's good? All right, so preserving dimensionality. Uh, data frames and tibbles behave differently. The tibble defaults to preserving dimensionality and data frames do not. So um, this can cause some unexpected results and code breaking. Um, in order to preserve dimensionality with a data frame, you want to use this drop equals false within the selection or just use a tibble. Um, so here's an example to show the difference. If you have a tibble um, and then you select uh, column A, you'll see it returns, uh, I put this inside structure so you can see it's returning a tibble. Um, And then, um, sorry, it's equivalent to, so yeah, so it's equivalent to using drop equals false within the selection, right? This, this is the same as this. So we just put it inside the structure first and then just to show you how it prints, right? It prints as a tibble. Um, but if you do drop equals true on a tibble, then you get just a vector, not another tibble. And data frames are the opposite. So here, if you select a single column, you'll get a, a, a single vector by default. But if you use that drop equals false, 
then it returns a data frame with just one column. Right? So they're basically opposites of it, of each other. With the tibble, you need drop equals true if you want to override the default. And with data frame, you need drop equals false if you want to override the defaults, right? Because they have opposite default values. And then just to be clear, factors also have a drop argument, but it's totally different with factors. When you use drop equals true on a factor, it drops the unused factor levels, right? So in, in this case, we have Z, which is a factor with levels A, B, and C that we created. But then if you just select one element and you use drop equals true, the levels now show just A because all of the other factor levels are not being used. There are no values at those levels. So it drops them if you put drop equals true. Okay, um, so that was all selecting multiple elements. Then for selecting single elements, um, use the double brackets or the dollar signs. We kind of touched on that a little bit already. Um, and here's where he explains that you can only, uh, because it only returns a single item, you can only put a single positive integer or a single string inside the double bracket. Um, so again, if you tried to put a, any kind of range in here, that would not work. Um, Hadley recommends using the double brackets with atomic vectors whenever you want to extract a single value to basically make it explicitly clear and reinforce the expectation that you're getting and setting individual values. So um, he recommends the double brackets whenever whenever you're dealing with single values. Um, the dollar sign is basically equivalent to the double brackets. Um, it does not work with stored values. So you can't put the name of the column that you want to select into a variable and then use dollar sign and that variable name to try to get the cylinders. Um, it'll give you no, you have to um, use if you want to save the name into a variable, then you have to use the double brackets, not the dollar sign, right? That will work. Um, and the dollar sign allows partial matching, double brackets does not. So um, here your list uh, is named ABC. Um, if you, sorry, yeah, so here dollar sign A will work, even though the name is actually ABC, because dollar sign does allow that. But if you try to put just A within the double brackets, it'll return null. That does not work. Um, Hadley advises changing the global settings because I guess this is a little bit confusing behavior um, to allow the partial matching here. Uh, and that way you'll get a warning to show that it's a partial match. And tibbles do not have this behavior. So it'll just tell you Again, this is, what do we call it? Surly. It'll just complain and say that column doesn't exist, basically. Um, how do we do? Oh, we're at time again. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, do I talk too much? I'm sorry. Am I get, like going into too no, much? No, I think this is great. I too just much think detail? Like, no, I think, I mean. Okay. Um. So it's up to you guys if we want to continue continue next week I don't I don't want to cut into the next person's time but um well I, I guess think we'll the next chapter is quite short okay so maybe so, next well. what we'll do is we'll st start with the next chapter so that I like I said I don't cut into that person's time and then we can come back to this but I think we covered kind of a lot already um like the the basics so are we all good all right so I have to put end in the chat right just the word end and yeah.